Hold up. Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and DC Comics right now has a Megan Fitzmartin problem. And we're going to go through it, and I don't mean this to come off as an attack, but this woman really has done some serious damage not only to Tim Drake, but to Young Justice. And now we are seeing her being kind of granted another series with Riley Rossmo, which worries me even more. A lot of people love Tim Drake. A lot of people adore Young Justice. And when I am a casual Young Justice fan, and I point out to you here in a few minutes, a bunch of really bad, really terrible continuity errors, and you make a book that is so nihilistic in nature, I'm not sure anybody can stand it, all at the kind of altar of being almost fake woke. You make everybody that's trying to or is progressive look bad by comparison. There are literal parts in this, characters created for checkboxes. Normally, I would push back against that sort of thing and show you the reality of the situation. The reality in this situation is Megan is a terrible writer, for one. I'm going to show you why that is. And she's not progressive, but pretending to be. Yeah, this is really, really bad. Normally, I wouldn't roast something so deeply, but I can't help it. I have a strict three strikes and you're out policy when it comes to comics. I always give new series three issues. I always give... New writers, three different products. Well, we're going to talk about all three of those. And actually, I gave this woman more because when she initially did the Bernard and Tim Drake storyline, I thought it was done very well. When we saw it in Urban Legends, it was actually pretty good. It wasn't like a for sure, oh, I think I'm this. I know I'm bi. I know I'm gay. It was a, this is one date. Let's see how it goes from here. And I thought that was a really good way to do it until we got to the Pride special. And most people know Tim and Stephanie have been together for years. For years. A lot of people are attached to this couple. So this had to be done with so much finesse. It was done with none. It was done with none. And we're actually going to go through specific parts where I think she's actually trying to stick it to the reader, which I hate. Do not do this. It makes you look really bad. So basically, Tim broke up with Stephanie off page through a text. And then when she meets Bernard, she's so happy. After everything they've been through, all hugs. This is not how real emotions work. This is bad writing in a nutshell. You do not get this happy after dating for somebody for years, years. You just don't. I'm sorry. You're wrong here. Now let's move on to my main gripe of this whole thing. And that is Dark Crisis, Young Justice. Dark Crisis, in a nutshell, besides these issues, has been good. I like the pocket universes. I like the new stuff we're getting with the announcement of Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths. I love the idea of a green hell and all of these things. This is very much so easily skipped. Now... I'm going to go through a little bit here, but I wanted to let you know this isn't a real review. We're going to go through different panels where some of this stuff is so problematic. Some of this stuff is completely disrespectful. But at the base of all of this, this book is so grim and nihilistic. It makes the whole dark crisis, all of the death of the Justice League, everything about Cassie and the Young Justice. It makes everything about them in a nutshell. And it is, it is, it's terrible. Everybody has a terrible attitude. These are not superheroes. These are not superheroes. So let's start out right in the beginning. We're going to go through a little bit of one and two. Again, I'm just going to show you some panels. I'm not going through it all. So first off, I want to show you this panel because Superboy is super upset. If they died, would they actually make a monument for them? Right, we've seen Young Justice die in different events before, right? Would they make a monument of the psych? Oh, wait, they have. That's right. Megan, did you even know that in Infinite Crisis, they literally got statues? 
Okay, this isn't the worst of the continuity errors. We will get there, I promise. And I want to talk about Sissy a little bit. Because if this is the... This, I want to be clear here. This is the real world Sissy. This isn't the pocket universe Sissy. We're going to talk about those characters here in a minute. But this is the real world Sissy. I don't know what happened to the boys. They're probably off finding horrible coping mechanisms to process their fake dads being dead. The real world Arrowette. Now, I know we haven't seen her in 20 years or so, but regardless, she is such a see you next Tuesday in this book. There's no reason for anyone. Uh, it's infuriating. Now, nobody cares. Nobody cares at all that Cassie is trying to find the boys and Pulse, Superboy, and Tim Drake actually out there. They're trying to, they're gone. They're gone, right? Nobody gives a shit to help. Flash even yells at Cassie. But I digress, right? So let's talk about the Mighty Endowed. Uh, there's this, I actually thought it was kind of cute that the Mighty Endowed, they did like, so if you don't know, she's an old, old, old character. And the reason she looks like a cat is because she was supposed to be initially named Sex Kitten. Um, but the, they use like these little poofs of smoke over her cleavage to kind of, I don't know, <laughs> hide it, I guess, which is really silly to me. But I guess that's a thing. Um, her, her, she was so beautiful, she could basically hypnotize you, right? Um, they use the smoke windows on the Mighty Endowed. Okay. And then they use this kind of little, oh, it's so quirky. My God, it's so quirky, right? Um, Tora, she was only ever in a one shot. And the note literally says, um, late earlies or late 90s, early 2000s. That's quirky, right? Because they don't know. I actually believe they don't know. It was in 1999. Not that it wasn't accurate, but it was in 1999. Now, we've talked about representation on this channel many times before. And I would say I'm one of the very few that on, on this platform that are for representation. Organic, great representation. Liz, this is Cassie. She, her. Cassie, this is Liz. They, them. We will never, ever see this character again. This character, this panel, this whole page, not being in here would not make a difference. She literally just put her in there to have pronouns. And I'm telling you right now, you cannot convince me different because this character is only in this panel. Only in this panel. And then walks away. No need to talk about this person. There was no need for an introduction. This should have been left on the cutting room floor. Before I get any too further in this fucking rant, I want to make sure I say Laura Braga's art on this is phenomenal. And when I say phenomenal, I mean she should be on the highest selling book at DC. It is that good. So great. Okay, well, that's probably Jorge Jimenez, but one of the higher selling ones. You get my point. She's amazing. So I pointed, posted this yesterday at my community post because I was so mad reading this book. I only remember. <laughs> so this sentence Clearly doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I, I, I'm i pretty sure I know what they mean. They're missing commas or they've got words in the wrong order. This whole thing reads like maybe she has the education level of a sixth grader as far as writing and reading goes. Um, and I'm not claiming to be the most intelligent person either. I'm just saying, look at this, this and tell me it reads correctly. I only remember fighting people the Justice League didn't like, like women. <laughs> What? What? Are you serious? Of people from other countries. She just called the ju did she just call the Justice League? Now it could be she just wasn't good at she's just not very good at writing these sentences out. But did she just call the Justice League sexist and xenophobic? Um people from other countries who were just trying to do their best. Okay, sure. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I cannot believe she just did that whole like almost um last history of the DC universe kind of thing where she's like, oh, ho, ho, the white savior. Okay. All right. Fake progressivism at its best. And this is where I had decided I was going to do a video. So we have Sissy yelling at Cassie, right? I stopped being a superhero because of the toxicity. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, 
Your life revolves around those three boys and you like it. You like the mess, don't you? Who are you without them? Oh my God, that is not why she stopped being a superhero. Honestly, I doubt you know why, but here, let me fill you in. The reason Sissy stopped being a superhero was because she crossed a line. There is so much more nuance to that. She hung it up because of that fear. But you blame it on toxicity? A, I'm saying this right now. A basic Google search would have fixed this second, very clear, very jolting continuity error. But sure. Um, so we have this second Cassie in the pocket universe. And uh, she's irritating. I mean, everybody is in this this book, right? Um, but she's like going up to Tim. We're going to get into homophobic Batman. Don't you worry. Um, and honestly, she thinks that Tim always wanted to be Batman. Come on. Come on now. You have to know better than this. You have to know better than this. And the reason I'm being so critical is because I liked the few first stories in Urban Legends. I thought she did a good job. And then she flipped the switch on where she wanted to be super fake progressive. I'm sorry. You're not. You're damaging to non-binary people by having the representation not matter. And it looked like the only reason you put that in there was to, you know, maybe fuck with your fans a little bit. Not your fans, DC Comics fans. They're, I'm sorry, fake representation is not good enough because it's clear it's fake. And then we get homophobic Batman who calls... <laughs> this, this one was clearly a shot at critics, okay. Um, but you, <laughs> you will, you will be. She's your destiny once you're out of this phase. Calling being bisexual a phase. Okay, um, I think that probably is enough. Is enough for anyone to realize that not only are her writing skills very much so lacking, her critical thinking skills of these situations are non-existent. And her level of admiration and ability to even do research for her job are gone. Are gone. There is nothing at this point I wouldn't do for some great original, not even original, bring Vixen in, bring great representation forward. Nobody asks for fake representation. Nobody asks for fake non-binary people to be put in there. You put that in there to piss people off. And honestly, the idea of it being so invalidated in your heart says more about you than it does about something like this. It does about somebody wanting real representation. So honestly, fuck you for even thinking that that was going to get you some points. Sorry, this book is terrible on so many levels. This is not somebody that should be writing comics. And I apologize to everybody because <laughs> I didn't think I was going to go that hard on it. But the more and more I talk about this, the more and more it irritates me. As somebody that just wants the best for this medium, you have your fake per... Uh, performative activism instead of actually writing this instead of actually caring about non-binary people instead of actually caring about queer characters you care about backpats and this is what people have talked out against they've they they've diluted that but regardless this is fucking ridiculous i'll see you guys in the next one